What's this got to do with me? Your lungs expand to bring in life's essential gas, oxygen, from the air. Expanded lungs naturally contract to expel the body's waste gas, carbon dioxide. Your lungs usually expand and contract in two main ways. One is an unconscious downward and upward movement of a thin muscle called the diaphragm, which separates the chest from the belly. The other way is by raising or lowering the ribs to increase or decrease the volume of the chest cavity. We breathe in or inhale when the diaphragm contracts. This pulls the lower part of the lungs downward. When we breathe out or exhale, the diaphragm and lungs relax and return to their resting positions. <laughs> So that's breathing. Breathing, as you saw, is the simple process of flexing and relaxing the diaphragm, which allows air to not only enter the body, but make its way down to the alveoli. It almost doesn't matter who or what you are. The act of breathing is the same and, in general, will fill the respiratory system with air. The air, gases, enters the mouth or nose, travels down the trachea, through the bronchi, into the bronchioles, and finally ends up in the alveoli. The process of respiration is more concerned with the gases in the air than the air itself. In this case, the gases we are concerned with are carbon dioxide and oxygen. When we inhale air, both oxygen and some carbon dioxide enter our respiratory systems. Both gases enter at the same time, although this animation shows each one going in separately for simplicity. The air, filled with oxygen and carbon dioxide and other gases, travels down the trachea and into both the bronchi and the bronchioles. The last stop for the gases are the tiny air sacs called alveoli. You should note the capillaries, arteries, and veins surrounding the alveoli, shown here in red and blue. Here we see the last stop for the air, the alveoli. The alveoli is surrounded by capillaries. The capillaries are connected to pulmonary arteries on the left and pulmonary veins on the right. The pulmonary artery is carrying carbon dioxide filled blood from the heart and the pulmonary vein will carry oxygen rich blood back to the heart. Remember that the blood is always in motion, so the pulmonary artery is bringing carbon dioxide filled blood to the alveoli as the alveoli is filling with oxygen. A concentration gradient is formed causing the carbon dioxide to diffuse into the alveoli and the oxygen to diffuse into the blood. Carbon dioxide will be exhaled and the oxygen-rich blood will be transported to the whole body. Like this train, the blood is in constant motion and moves in one direction. As it passes by the alveoli, it dumps carbon dioxide and takes on oxygen through the process of diffusion. Oxygen does not turn into carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide does not turn into oxygen. That's later. The blood train will continue on its course, coming into contact with every part of the human body, making a curious circuit around those parts below the heart and those parts above the heart. In this video, the train engine is providing the power to make the train move. In your vascular system, it is the heart providing the push to make the blood move. So the heart in you is like the engine of this train. Lastly, in most cases, this train will not enter the train station building to load and unload passengers. Most of the time, it simply moves in next to the station. The same is true of our blood. None of our capillaries, or the blood in them, travels into or through the alveoli. They always run next to them. Logically speaking, if your lungs filled with blood, you wouldn't be able to breathe or respirate, and you might die. Here we see an artery bringing oxygen-filled blood to the cell by way of diffusion. The blue vessel is a vein, ready to take carbon dioxide-filled blood back to the heart.
What you are looking at is the end of the line for oxygen and the beginning of the line for carbon dioxide. At this cell organelle, oxygen is being changed into carbon dioxide with the addition of a carbon atom. This is the only place that oxygen changes into another molecule. Diffusion brings more oxygen to the mitochondria and releases carbon dioxide out of the cell. From this point forward, the carbon dioxide will travel through the veins back to the heart and lungs where diffusion will dump it into the alveoli for exhaling. New Cuban! New Cuban! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time for a change! Show you how it goes. No,